Join us now for Education Matters, a weekly look at the real people and real stories in education across North Carolina. Welcome to Education Matters, presented by the Public School Forum of North Carolina. I'm Keith Poston. Peter Hans became the ninth president of the North Carolina Community College System in May. He now oversees 58 community colleges that educate more than 700,000 students each year, the third largest community college system in the country. This week, we're going to talk with Peter about the opportunities and challenges for community colleges and education overall here in North Carolina, as well as his goals for the new year. Before we tackle our main topic, we switch to our headlines, our quick scan of education headlines across North Carolina and the U.S. The 2018 session of the North Carolina General Assembly actually just ended a week ago, two weeks before a new General Assembly is set to be sworn in. Legislators came back for a special session after the November election, which saw the Republican veto-proof supermajority ended. Lawmakers passed several controversial measures, including a technical corrections bill that included dozens of changes in laws, including one that could have far-reaching implications for public education. The measure will allow any municipally-run charter schools to offer state pensions to teachers at those schools, likely making it easier for the model to spread to more cities. The new charter school model for town-run charters in four Charlotte suburbs has been criticized because it could lead to more racially segregated schools, a concern that Governor Cooper cited when he vetoed it. The supermajority in its last, one of its last legislative acts overrode the veto. Just before Christmas, the North Carolina Supreme Court ruled against parents and children in Halifax County in a lawsuit contending that county commissioners had not fairly distributed tax money hurting some students. In its ruling, North Carolina's top court says the state is responsible, not the counties, when schools are so underfunded that some children don't get the constitutionally required sound basic education. The ruling reaffirms the court's landmark Leandro decision that the state is constitutionally obligated to provide access to a sound basic education. Finally, the Trump administration announced plans to roll back some Obama-era guidelines around school discipline that were created to prevent racial discrimination. Two North Carolina school districts that recently reached agreements with federal civil rights investigators over their discipline policies, Wake and Durham, say they'll continue their discipline reforms regardless of whether the guidance is rescinded. Remember, you can visit the Public School Forum's website at ncforum.org, click on Education Matters, and read more about these headlines as well as all the other topics we cover each week. 